Hey, it's Jeff Sanders here. I am on a morning hike. It's about 6 a.m. here at Percy Warner Park in Nashville, Tennessee. It is a, uh, <laughs> well, there's an active thunderstorm that I opted into when I came for my hike today. But I thought it was poignant to point that out specifically for the content of this episode, which is to restart from zero oftentimes simply requires you take small steps. And so in my case right now, I'm doing a fitness reboot. So all I really wanted to do was come for a short hike. And I've been doing that for the last couple of weeks. This morning, the weather is not um, not the norm, we'll say, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, whenever I think about a restart, I think about doing things I haven't done before, one of the first things that pops into my head, and I'm sure yours as well, are excuses. You know, well, why could I avoid this? How could I get out of this? What's, what, what can I do instead of the thing I said I would do? And when you see an active thunderstorm, you might think, well, I'm not going to go for my hike this morning. But I said, nah, I'm going to go anyway. Is that safe? Probably not. So I'm not going to on this podcast recommend anyone do that. But I think that sometimes in life, at least for me, once I say I'm going to do something, I'm in. Like, let's do it. Here we go. And I think that for me, I know, especially recently, man, I've had every excuse in the book to not do the things I said I would do. And so when I have the opportunity to face that head on, like I do this morning, I'm going to take that chance. So here I am, out for a hike in a beautiful park on a beautiful morning, enjoying what the weather is bringing me. So hopefully for you, you can find something that fits your, you know, your schedule, your life choices, your goals. But when the opportunity pops up to face an excuse head on, take it. Take it and run with it. Or take it and hike with it, I guess, and a storm. <laughs> okay, I'm very wet. I'm, I'm going to go. Uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Bye-bye. This is the 5 a.m. Miracle, episode number 498. How to Restart from Zero, the simple path to snowball your success. Good morning and welcome to the 5 a.m. Miracle. I am Jeff Sanders, and this is the podcast dedicated to dominating your day before breakfast. My goal is to help you bounce out of bed with enthusiasm, create powerful, lifelong habits, and tackle your grandest goals with extraordinary energy. In the episode this week, I'll break down what it means to start over again and again and again, why starting over is so refreshing and necessary at times, and how to use the snowball metaphor to catapult your success from nothing into something remarkable and sustainable for years to come. Let's get to it. All right, one more thought. So I'm out here in this pretty epic storm. It's pouring down rain. I'm soaked head to toe right now. And one thought that struck me that I've had before many times when I'm out doing these types of runs or hikes or kind of adventure excursions is I'm the only one here. Now you might say, well, Jeff, duh. <laughs> You're in a dangerous thunderstorm. And I would respond, yeah, but it's like this is where, for me at least, the, the pros meet the amateurs. This is where those who are committed meet those who are uncommitted. This is the breaking point. It's once again those excuses, but it's really about those challenges, right? Like when you're faced with something, the pro says, I don't care, I'm going to go anyway. I'm just slipping the mud. And the amateur would say, here's my excuse, right? Stephen Pressfield's book, Turning Pro, phenomenal book on this topic. But I think that for me, this is one of those clear defining moments of I can choose the path I want and go forward, or I can choose the path I've taken and go backward. 
And I don't know about you, but the goals I want to achieve require forward movements. They require me to choose to go pro every single day. So the question for you is just, what is that defining pivot point? What is that moment where you're asking that question, do I go left or right? Do I say yes or no? Am I in on the morning excursion in the storm or am I not? Once again, please don't be dangerous and stupid with thunderstorms. <laughs> don't risk your life for your goals in that intensity. But I think this really speaks volumes. Think about that. Good. I can't tell you how many times I have restarted my own exercise routines. A hundred times? A thousand times? The thing about restarting is that we do it all the time, especially for those parts of life and work that don't ever go away. Your fitness, for example, is not something you solve once in your 20s and then reap the benefits of for decades to come. If you stop working out, well, you lose what you gained faster than you'd likely prefer. And then, well, you guessed it, you have to start over. Restarting anything can be challenging, but it's such an incredible and necessary process. As you just heard in these examples of me hiking in a thunderstorm early in the morning, because I said yes. I said yes to a restart. My fitness needed to begin again. And again and again and again over the course of many years, but specifically in this season, I committed to a very simple daily habit of waking up early and going for a hike in the woods. And it just so happened that the other morning, well, it was raining and it was thundering and it was lightning and it was intense. And of course, like I just mentioned, all these excuses were there to not go. But I said, no, 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 I'm going to go anyway because I am restarting something that I want to continue. I am beginning again on something that I don't want to lose the progress of because I yet again found a reason not to do it. So the episode this week, yes, it's about restarting. It's about a new beginning, a refreshing new opportunity to dig into something you've done before, and now you have the chance to dig in and do it better. But I think it's also about this perspective that we take into how we choose to do something. We'll get to the specifics here in a minute, but there is a lot to say about what it means to start over, especially if you've been through those points in your life where you've been knocked down quite a few times. Do you even have the energy to get back up? Is it even worth trying again? We're going to touch on those things also. So let's get to it now. How to restart from zero, the simple path to snowball your success. Let's begin by talking about what it actually means to start over again and again and again. Uh, common examples like the ones I just mentioned here would be a, a fitness routine. It's probably the most common things we restart. Of course, a diet. <laughs> Many people will start a new diet every week if that's what it takes. Also, things like a financial venture, entrepreneurship, or a new project you have at work, something where you want to begin something now that you tried before and it didn't work. Maybe it failed miserably or maybe it just wasn't what you wanted, but you're going to try again. Another example may be a relationship that has been struggling over, over the years and now it's time to reboot that relationship to make it better so it can be something it wasn't before. Uh, just recently, I went through a, a nice refresh of the clothes in my closet. Uh, I'm the kind of guy who's worked from home for nearly a decade. If you saw me on an average day, the clothes that I wear are, they're, they're worn out. They're kind of gross. Uh, I don't see people all that often. So my reason for buying new clothes was just, uh, I didn't really care. But I got to a point recently where I looked in the mirror and I was like, Jeff, what are you doing, man? Come on, <laughs> get some new clothes here. So I did, and it was refreshing, and it was good. And what it means to begin again is to give yourself that opportunity to say, I can start over and do this better. And so the, the simple example there of clothes was a very obvious one because it's so visual. You can see what you did. You can. I'm, today, I'm wearing a brand new shirt that I bought last week, and it feels good. I look in the mirror at myself and I'm like, okay, this is a new Jeff Sanders. This is a new beginning. This is something as small as it is. It's, it's a coat of paint on, on the room you've lived in for years. The fresh coat of paint makes a difference. We are visual creatures starting over with something new. 
really does have this emotional impact. You know, starting over also means being willing to face your realities now. One thing about this fitness routine I just restarted yet again was this realization yet again that I am not where I want to be in that area of my life. So in terms of fitness, I mean, yes, I've gone through many seasons of trying a lot of different things in terms of being in better shape. Uh, But one thing that always strikes me is reality. Reality has a way of really smacking you in the face and saying, hey, you think you're here, but you're not. You think you're better than you are, but really you're back here at the starting line. And if you want to make actual tangible progress, not lying to yourself progress, not fake progress, but actual progress, you have to start in reality where you actually are. And obviously, one of the best examples of that would be to to not hide yourself from the truth, which could mean looking at yourself in the mirror in a very literal, physical way, not just metaphorically, literally look at yourself in the mirror. Do you need new clothes? Do you need to work out? Do you need to take care of yourself better? These are the the thoughts that I've had recently in this like self-care concept kicked in in a big way where I realized that my focus, my finances, my schedule, my energy... Well, they were all going towards other projects. But one thing that I had basically ignored was myself, my physical body. And so for me, starting over means facing the reality, looking at myself naked in the mirror, both literal and metaphorical. Being naked in this sense means looking at reality. Where are you now? What does reality look like? And if you're not willing to see that, if you're not willing to see your finances for where they are, like they might be a hot mess, but you keep using the band-aids, you know, the credit cards, whatever the case may be to just simply say, I'll get to that later. I'll go face reality when it's convenient. I'll go face reality when I am forced to. Sometimes it takes that, right? Oftentimes people will not change their health until something terrible happens. Until a doctor tells you, you just had a heart attack. It's time to change your ways. Most of us, when it comes to many areas of life, we'll wait for that moment. We'll wait until basically it's too late, until we have reality smacked in our faces for us. Like, we're not going to do it ourselves. Like, that, that requires some discipline and some, you know, some truth facing voluntarily versus the other examples where, well, now I'm forced to deal with it, so I will. The kind of proactive nature that I've had towards my life and my goals and the way that I like to tackle my day-to-day in general is that nature of being proactive. It's not saying waiting for the inevitable bad thing to happen. It's saying, I'm going to start over and take a fresh look at my life for where it is right now so that I don't have those awful smack-in-the-face moments in the future. You know, starting over can also mean in that sense of facing reality, uh, having those hard conversations, whether it's with yourself or with someone else or both, it's another way for you to kind of get that stuff out there. Let me use an example here of of talking to myself. Uh, Just this morning before this recording, uh, I could tell that I had some things on my mind that were bothering me, some problems that had been kind of brewing in the background. And I was being, I was frustrated, right? I felt the, the, the tension that was going on in my own head of my, my calendar being not in sync and these scheduling conflicts and these goals I was trying to get done, but never felt like I had the time to really address these things. So I canceled my plans for a few hours and I revamped my calendar. I gave myself the opportunity to look over in a fresh new way. What would it look like if my calendar was more ideal? What would it look like if these problems had space to be addressed in a real tangible way in my life? And I just wrote it all down. The thing that actually struck me the most was how much of a GTD concept I used, I integrated this morning. So David Allen's Getting Things Done methodology or GTD, uh, one of the key concepts he talks about is getting your thoughts out of your head and onto paper. When I interviewed David Allen years ago, one of the things that he talked about that I have never forgotten is this idea that if something's bothering you, 
if there is something mulling in the back of your mind and you just can't seem to, to settle on a solution, getting that thought out of your head and onto paper is a phenomenal first step. But for me, what was really uh, enlightening this morning was the fact that if I keep thinking about something, it means I haven't thought it through fully yet. Uh, David Allen has said many times that when we have that thought in the back of our mind, when we're constantly thinking about something, it's because we haven't thought it through fully yet. But once you do, once you get those thoughts out of your head, you write it down, you make a plan, you put it on the calendar, you take the actions that take those the idea from your head to something tangible outside of your brain, well, all of a sudden, you're not carrying that burden anymore. You're not carrying the weight or the stress of that recurring thought, that annoyance, that frustration. It's just not there anymore. It's somewhere else and can be dealt with in a much more tangible way. And that's refreshing. That, in many ways, is a chance to start over on something, to address it in a way that's so direct and so practical and so productive that then all of a sudden you have control. And really, this is what the whole thing is about. Restarting is saying, I'm going to re-begin this new area of my life because I want to regain control over this area. I want to have a plan. I want to have action steps, a schedule, a budget. I want time, energy, money, focus, all of my resources to pour into this new area or an old area that's new again is going to restart with a plan that fits my season of life for where I am now and where I'm going next. Because these things change over time. Starting over now on something means something very different than it did 10 years ago or what it will mean 10 years from now. There's a lot to be said about a fresh start that's a needed and necessary process. That's why we have seasons of the year in many ways or how we've evolved to, I guess, really adapt to the fact that, you know, the earth has seasons. One of the things I love about Nashville, Tennessee, where I live, is that we get real four seasons of the year. Like the temperature, the weather, it changes. And with every new season is a chance to re-begin with something new and fresh and to lean into those seasons and say, this is a new chance to do something different because the world around me has physically changed. And it feels good. I love a fresh start. I love to begin with something new. And when you have the chance to intentionally and proactively tackle these things You have the opportunity to regain that control, regain that fresh new perspective, and then do things better. Oftentimes, starting over means letting go of old things for the opportunity to free up space for the new things. You know, one thing I've done recently with my, my systems, both my calendar and my fitness routines as well, is I've taken the old systems and I've basically just chucked them and said, what if I started over from scratch? What if the old systems just didn't work anymore. And in many ways, that's true of where I am. Well, then I'm forced to readdress it from scratch and ask the question right here and now, what matters most? Right here and now, what is the most pressing, most pivotal thing that I could do? What is the number one thing that matters most now? Not what I said mattered most six months ago, but what actually is important today. One thing I know about my life is that it is constantly in flux. I mean, change is just the name of the game for me. So any plan that I make will change, guaranteed. There is no maybe it'll change later. It will change. And so because of that, because my life is in flux, this chance to restart is a constant one. Which, which is both kind of exhausting, but also very like opportunistic. It's a chance for me to say, okay, if I get a fresh start at my calendar, a fresh start with my finances, a fresh start with my health, I can choose something smarter and better now. So let's go do that. Let's go make today better than it could have been. And I just love that. I love the refreshing nature of saying today can be something more than I thought that it was. Today can be a brand new day. You know, The 5 a.m. miracle concept Yes, it's based on that, this idea of waking up early and choosing something that you really care about and, and doing that thing firsthand. That, that's all well and good. But really, like kind of the underpinning foundation of all of that says today's a brand new day. It's 5 a.m. Today is a blank slate. What could today bring? What kind of refreshing new uh, amazingness could happen today? That's the opportunity. That's 
That's the miracle in many ways. The miracle is the opportunity to go take control of your life and do something different and better. And then when you do, you reap the rewards. When you actually execute on this new refreshing plan, you begin again, you feel that sense of energy, that sense of newness. And then all of a sudden, that thing before that was bugging you or that rut that you were in or the the stuckness that you felt, well, it kind of just fades away and and really gives you the opportunity to say, because this thing is brand new, because I'm feeling the emotions, now I have momentum, I have more energy, I have more creativity, I have so many more ideas on how to improve it and take it in a whole new direction. But you have to give yourself the chance to let go of the old systems to then let have space for those new systems to even exist. So now that I've kind of broken down a lot of what it means to begin again, to have this refreshing restart, let's go through some more of the nuts and bolts of how to actually practically do this. There are a lot of ways to restart depending on what it is you want to begin again, whether it's a business, a relationship, a fitness program, a diet, you know, an emotional baggage you want to let go from decades of, of nonsense, whatever the thing is you're trying to, to correct here. It all begins with the first step of tiny actions. The book, The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy, revolutionized my thinking on habits. And one of the key things of the compound effect is that small actions compound over time. And the amazingness of the system which works for compound interest with money, it works with compounding habits in your life, is that little itty-bitty decisions have incredible power. So if you want to begin something again and you're thinking to yourself, well, yes, I need to lose weight. Yes, I need to go work out more. Yes, I need to fix my finances. But, here come the excuses, but I can't because there's so much work to do. It's so difficult. The mountain to climb is so high. How will I ever fill in the blank do this big thing. The only answer to any of that is always tiny individual steps. You know, the example I've used in this podcast for years is if your goal is to run a marathon, a 26.2 mile race, well, that's a long way. If you don't run, 26 miles sounds like an eternity. But in reality, it's only about 40,000 steps, individual footsteps. Now, you might think, well, 40,000 steps, Jeff, that's a ridiculously long way. Yeah, it sounds like a lot. It does. But when you're out there taking step by step by step, one at a time, over and over, in a nice rhythm, you know what happens? You run a mile, and then two, and then 10, and then 20, and then a marathon. Like It just, it happens. Time passes, and the individual steps add up. They always do. Being willing to start small says I'm willing to begin that process, to take those tiny steps, to start over and do the ittiest of bittiest of things because I know that if I commit to that for the long haul, I will build the momentum and I will get the results. The downside to this is they're tiny steps, so you're not going to see huge results for a long time. The patience game here is epic. It is, oh, it's, it, it's the hardest part. Absolutely. Restarting for me has two major problems. The first is the patience game we all can acknowledge. And the second is the fact that if you're restarting something, there is this probably inevitable reality that you failed before, that it didn't work before. You're restarting because you need to fix a problem. And the opportunity there, of course, is to do it better. But then you always have that thought in your head, well, what if I make the same mistakes as before? What if this fails again, but for new reasons? What if I can't succeed yet again? Getting knocked down over and over again is an exhausting thing, and that's not the goal is to be knocked down all the time. The goal here is success. It is achievement. But one thing that I have seen consistently is that restarting isn't something you do only if your project fails. Restarting happens because we know it will. This is a tough concept for me to wrap my brain around, but it's something that I have recently kind of let settle a little more, which is that restarting is a guaranteed activity. Failure is not something you're going to avoid. 
mistakes, problems, projects not working out. That will happen. All these things are guarantees. Being knocked down will happen again and again. The only real question is, how do you choose to get back up a little smarter each time? That's the process. The process is solving the problems along the way to get better and better. So eventually you do get the goal you want in most cases, but the path you took to get there will never look like the path you imagined in the beginning. Being knocked down is part of the journey. Like experiencing those problems and solving them is part of the process. It's not smooth sailing with doors wide open and everything works out beautifully. That's very rare, especially for big, ambitious goals. The bigger the goal, the more complicated it is, the more problems you experience, the more likely you're going to have to be knocked down, get back up, solve the problem. And one of the best strategies to allow yourself to ease into all of that is to keep your action steps, your next literal tangible action, small, simple, and direct. The more you're able to do that, the more control you have over that individual step, which then feeds into that momentum, the emotional uh, joy that you feel from doing good work. And then if you do get knocked back down or when, when you do, well, you take the next small step to get back up and begin again. And that's all this is, just the recurring process of, oop, that didn't work. Here we go. Oh, that didn't work also. Okay, here we go. It doesn't sound ideal if you're thinking about, well, life is just a series of successes and resume builders. No, (laughs) it's not how it is. We are restarting again because we need to. So the compound effect is another way of saying this snowball to success concept. So uh, I labeled the episode this week. This is a, a really a simple path to using this snowball concept. And the snowball concept, of course, builds on these tiny actions. The snowball itself will grow over time, become a much larger, uh, huge snowball with big, massive uh, amazingness attached to it, only because the individual small things began on day one. And so if you're going to leverage the snowball effect, leverage the compound effect, you're going to commit to a lifestyle of making those small choices and seeing those things compound over time. And then when things happen, you're going to be a lot less deterred by them. Because you've built up this momentum, built up these success systems, made smarter choices. You will experience fewer problems in that sense if you have more of that success. Then, of course, what I tend to do is I opt into more problems. I voluntarily opt into solving more things because the challenge is the goal. The obstacle is the way, if you want to use uh, the language from that amazing book. Uh, The author's name is escaping me. I'll get it. The uh, Dan, no. Ryan Holiday. There it is. Okay. Ryan Holiday's book, The Obstacle is the Way. Phenomenal book also, which really speaks to all of this, that the obstacle, in the sense that Ryan Holiday talks about it, is the point. The mountain to climb is the journey. We're not trying to avoid the hard work. We're not trying to lean into comfort. We're not trying to find a lifestyle where problems don't exist. We are opting into problems on purpose. We're opting into solving them because that's what this is. That's a big shift if you've not been there before. If you think of life as, oh, a problem is a negative thing. You turn that on its head and say, no, the problem is the chance to do something better, to solve something, to move forward. The problem allows better things to exist at all. If we then leverage that into Stephen Pressfield's book, Turning Pro, which I mentioned earlier uh, in the recording, Turning pro is this idea of the mentality shift that you take from the amateur to the professional. Uh, I have an old episode of the podcast where I talk about this topic, and it's one that has stuck with me for many years. I read his book, I think, originally more than 10 years ago, and I've never forgotten the concepts because they apply to life all the time. And one thing that pros do is they acknowledge that life is filled with obstacles, and those obstacles are all opportunities to go do amazing things. And so if you want to start over and do it more effectively, do it better, make smarter choices, you do so with the mindset of a professional who is seeking out chances to make the world a better place, looking for opportunities to improve things, and you improve things by finding problems and solving them on purpose, proactively, looking for them, not just waiting until you get smacked in the face with the bad report from the doctor, as the example before. 
We're not waiting for the problem. We are seeking it out on purpose. And that's what leads to ultimately the best successes and for me, the most fulfillment. And the marathon's a great example of this. If someone forces you to run a marathon, well, that's just torture, right? That's awful. But if you voluntarily opt into a marathon, you train for it, you look you look forward to it, you put it on the calendar. I have an ultra marathon on my calendar for this calendar year. I'm probably not going to be in the best shape for it, but I am opting into that level of intensity. So it's fun. It's great. It's an awesome problem to solve. And I get the ripple effect of all the benefits that will happen in my life because I am choosing that challenge. And for me to restart a fitness routine to get back into things in a more effective way is the chance to say, if I want that big ambitious goal to happen, well, I have the chance yet again to do it better, to do it smarter, and to get more results. It's a phenomenal thing. The final concept here that I want to dig into is one that I, I've discussed before in this podcast in a lot of detail, but one that definitely speaks to, to the restart procrastination, let's say, which is fear. Fear is a real thing that stops us from restarting at all. Fear is a thing that says, I'm not going to look in the mirror at myself naked. Fear is a thing that says, I'm going to avoid the hard work on purpose because I am scared of putting myself out there. I'm scared of what it's going to feel like to expose reality. I'm scared of what it's going to take to have to acknowledge the fact that I've been making mistakes and screwing stuff up and I can't move forward because I just want to hide under the covers. I know what that's like. I feel that all the time. Like I, I am a, I, I know that feeling very acutely. And I also know the best way to tackle all of that is to tear off the covers, rip off the Band-Aid. Jump into that thunderstorm on purpose. Fear tells you to not do those things. It tells you to hide. Fear tells you to run away from problems. But of course, you're not going to restart and rebuild your life by hiding. You're not going to get that success you want by being comfortable. Of course not. You're going to get all the success you want by being willing to say yes to all of these challenges on purpose. That's it. And fear, over time, will be a little monster you have to fight forever, of course. But every single time that shows up, you just face it. Head on, directly, awkwardly, goofily, if that's even a word, you just face it. Okay, that was a lot this week. Uh, And I say a lot because I've had a lot on my mind that I've needed to get out. You know, I alluded to earlier with uh, David Allen's Getting Things Done. Uh, one uh, thing that I tend to feel quite a bit, especially in those seasons when I know a, a new restart is coming, is that my mind feels full and I need to just purge, get stuff out, you know, go for a long walk, get some good rest, clear my head, write things down, journal, because that process will help clear out the cobwebs, the mental cobwebs, the emotional cobwebs to then clarify what the next actions will be, what the next season will be about, and how to restart more effectively. So if you've been in a season where you felt stuck, or you felt that that kind of the mental cobwebs have been there for too long, or you had problems you have been avoiding for far too long, this is a chance right here now, this week, to acknowledge those, to write them down, to get them out of your head, onto paper, and define your next restart. Define your next season. And say, here's what it is. It's going to be about these things. I will, to the best of my ability, control the process. But, of course, acknowledge that control is not the goal. The goal is those tiny forward-moving steps. Restart with a refreshing attitude, brand new fresh coat of paint, and begin again in an awesome new way. So one final thought here in this storm this morning is that what always comes to mind for me when I do these kinds of activities, to make these kinds of choices, is this is when I feel the most alive. You know, one thing I've been doing recently is changing a lot of my habits. I have seasons like this where I make a lot of changes, and I'm definitely in one of those right now. And one thing I'm always struck by is that there's certain choices I make every day that are comfortable, they're normal, but I've normalized discomfort in the sense that too much comfort is uncomfortable. Too much of the same thing makes you numb. You forget about what it means to literally feel alive. 
And when I'm out here in these types of scenarios, it's impossible not to be extraordinarily aware of your humanity, your existence. The, you know, literally the rain falling on my head, the thunder in the background. I'm, I'm alive this morning and it feels really good. And you don't have those kinds of moments in your life. If you've been in a rut, you've been stuck, things have been normalized and comfortable and monotonized, it's the same thing every day, all the time. Sometimes you just need to restart by breaking yourself out of that shell, shocking yourself back into existence. These kinds of shocks are fun. That's the other key thing. These aren't painful. This is not a, a negative experience. This is exactly the opposite. Most people will run from a storm like this. They'll run the opposite direction. No, run into the storm, the metaphorical storm, if you will. But choose that path. That's when you actually feel alive. That's when, oh, this hill is big, okay. But that's when these things actually begin to feel fantastic, is choosing the big hill. Choose to go up. Man, it's great. And for the action step this week, clear the deck and start from scratch. You know, sometimes the best plan is starting over from zero. Oftentimes, the only way to make any real forward progress is to first go backwards. Restarting is rejuvenating and filled with possibility, and it doesn't have to be hard. It just has to happen. Take the first step and start right where you are. JeffSanders.com slash 498 is the place to go for the episode notes. And of course, subscribe to or follow this podcast at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any podcasting app you're using right now. And that's all I've got for you here on the 5 a.m. Miracle Podcast this week. Until next time, you have the power to change your life. And the fun begins bright and early. <laughs>